Before participating in the following activity, there are some important things we want you to do. Please remember to practice physical distancing of at least six feet from anyone that is outside of your home. Wear comfortable and proper shoes. Make sure you have an open space around you with no objects or obstacles in the way. Use the proper equipment or alternative objects you can find in your home. And last, stay hydrated and have fun. Hi, my name is Anne and I'm a Special Olympics Bachi coach for Barry, Ontario. And uh, we're here at Sunnydale Park today and we've put together a practice plan. Hi, I'm here and we're just playing bocce for fun. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Rachel. This is my first time bocce. And you're having lots of fun. I have lots of fun. Whew. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to do a warm up before we play. Um, it's important to do a warm up before you do any exercise, and the reason we do warm ups is so that we don't injure ourselves when we're playing our sport. It makes our muscles more flexible and we're less likely to get hurt when we're taking our shots. So, our warm ups usually last about five minutes at the most, um, and then after that, we'll commence our game. Tilt your head side to side five times, up and down five times, and left to right five times. Roll your shoulders backwards 10 times. Roll your shoulders forwards 10 times. Then lift your shoulders up and down. Stretch your right arm across your body, pulling with the opposite arm. Hold this for 10 seconds. Switch your arms and repeat. Lift your right arm above your head and hold it for 10 seconds. Switch your arms and repeat. Take a big step forward, bending both knees. Repeat five times on your left leg, then switch legs and repeat five times on your right leg. With slightly bent knees, reach down and try to touch your toes. Hold this for 10 seconds. Roll one ankle outwards five times, then inwards five times. Switch sides and repeat. This is a diagram of an official bocce court. A bocce court measures 60 feet long and four feet wide. The first line is a 10 foot line. It's from behind this line that you throw the polina. Your polina must land between the 30 foot line and the 10 foot back line. Once the polina is in play, it can be knocked back past the 10 foot back line and still be in play as long as it stays within the court. So we're going to start our game. So we have Rachel will have orange balls, Marianne will have the green balls, and the red ball in the centre is called our polina. 
So before we start the game, like in a lot of sports, we do a coin toss to determine who goes first. Okay? Rachel, heads or tails? Heads. Heads. That is tails. So Mary Ann goes up first. The sequence in play in Bachi is determined by who wins the coin toss. The athlete who wins the coin toss will throw out the Polina and their first ball. Then their opponent will throw their first ball. Whatever ball is furthest away from the Polina determines which athlete goes next. If it's the orange ball that's furthest away from the Polina, the athlete throwing the orange balls will continue to throw their orange balls until one of their orange balls is closer to the Polina than their opponent. An official will hold up a paddle to let the athletes know who is going next. The person who wins the frame throws out the polina for the next frame. Gameplay continues at the opposite end of the court. Notice how the athlete gets low as she delivers her ball so she can better see the court. She also has her foot and her arm behind the 10 foot line. The goal of Bachi is to get as many of your balls closest to the polina. That is also the first strategy of a Bachi game. Now it is your turn to try. Place your polina down and try to roll your bocce balls as close to the polina as possible. Pause the video and try this two or three times and see how close you can get. Another strategy is to knock the polina closer to your balls and away from the opponents. You may also want to separate the polina from the opponent's ball so that it is easier for you to roll towards it. Now it is your turn to try this bocce strategy. Place your polina down and try to use your bocce ball to knock the polina out of its place. This may take a little bit more power and accuracy. Pause the video and see how many times you can knock away the polina. If a ball is knocked out or thrown out of the court, the ball is considered a dead ball and will be removed from play. If a ball is accidentally moved during play, the official will return the ball to its former position. If an athlete rolls an extra ball when it is not his or her turn, that ball is considered dead and removed from play. If an athlete throws the wrong coloured ball, the official will wait until the ball stops, then replace the ball with the correct coloured ball. So what we have here is we have a a yellow, a green and an orange bocce ball and to me they look exactly the same distance from the polina. So the only way for me to determine that is to do a measure. And as an athlete in a competition it is your responsibility to ask for a measure if you're not sure if your ball is closer than your opponent's. So we always measure the ball from the middle of the bocce ball to the middle of the polina. So the green ball is closer to the polina, which means the orange ball, the athlete throwing the orange ball, which is Rachel, will have to throw the next ball. As you can see in this shot, the green ball is closest to the polina. The second ball closest to the polina is also a green ball, but the third ball closest to the polina is an orange ball. Therefore, the orange ball cancels out any other points, leaving green with two points. In this shot, you can see that green is closest to the polina. The second ball closest to the polina is an orange ball. Therefore, the orange ball cancels out any more points and the green in this frame earns one point. If there is a tie during a frame, the last person to throw the ball will continue throwing their balls until one of their balls is closer to the polina than their opponents. If there's a tie at the end of a frame, no points will be awarded. So today we played as a single player bat team, but you can play in pairs or in teams of four. You can play outdoors on a grass surface like we done. You can play indoors on an astro turf, like fake turf. You can also play on gravel. You can play in your backyard. You don't need a court like we have. Most people who play backyard bat don't have a court. 
and your court is wherever your balls go, right? So, you know, if you love bocce, enjoy the game and just have some fun this summer. So that's the end of our bocce practice. Um, we're just cleaning up the court now, um, getting ready to go home. So I would just like to thank our athletes, Rachel and Marianne, for helping out today. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed our <laughs> practice. Bye.